Hey, you got a tag to do today. I was uh, tagged uh, in your wildest dreams tag. I was tagged by Gavin. Uh, what's the name of Gavin's channel? Uh, genre Books. Uh, I really appreciate being tagged by you, Gavin, for this. This tag called In Your Wildest Dreams was created by Heather Reeds. And let's get into it. Uh, prompt number one. There are five prompts and uh, six prompts. Uh, number one, your fantasy time and place to read a book. Well, I guess I'm living it. Uh, I always wanted more time to read. Now that I'm retired, I have a lot of time to read. The place I was staying last before this had a really nice balcony. I liked sitting out there and reading on the balcony here. It's, there's a little bit of an outside balcony basically for drying clothes and it's, uh, a little too shady and breedy out, out there. I like to have some sunlight, but not direct sunlight. And I like it to be quiet. But I'm pretty much happy reading anywhere. Um, I find I'm having more trouble reading in public than I used to. I, I'm more easily distracted by noises and things. So someplace quiet, cozy, uh, maybe a blanket to put over my legs if it's a little chilly as it is today. Anyway, number two, your fantasy personal library or your personal library if you have attained your fantasy. Well, my fantasy personal library would be to have back every book I've gotten rid of, especially ones I had when I was a kid. I remember I was thinking the other day I had all those Michael Moorcock Eternal Champion books. I had all the DAW paperbacks of those or the, the ones that were in DAW paperbacks also had a lot of British imports. At that time, when I was first getting into science fiction and fantasy in the late 70s, a lot of the really good stuff was only available in British imports, which were not that, not impossible to find in American bookstores. Um, but a lot of those, uh, like the Elric books were published by Da, but some of the other ones, like uh, in the Eternal Champion, Michael Moorcock, things like uh, the Chronicles of Quorum were published, I think, by Avon when I read them. But there was a few other ones, uh, A few uh, the other more minor Eternal Champion characters were only published in British uh, like Sphere books or something like that. I'd love to have everything back that I ever got rid of, uh, which I've had to get rid of many books over my life from different traveling and stuff and just from buying too many books. And I've bought some books many times. And I'd kind of like to have one of these total pack rat situations that people have had who've never really gotten rid of any books. So that's my dream library, is to have everything I ever owned back. Good, bad, and indifferent. Okay, imagine, num no, so no, number three, imagine you've decided to build a bookshop. What would you call it? Would you sell new or used? Would you sell new or secondhand books? Would you sell anything else? What features would you want in that shop? Trying not to steal all of Gavin's ideas here, but definitely a feature that I want, and I think I mentioned this in one of my other things, is if I were rich, I would have a, also have a screening room attached to my bookstore. I would have a revival theater and a bookstore together and have a big section of cinema books. And the other day, I just thought I would have... Uh, a big section of novelizations, movie novelizations, which used to be very popular. still They still do occasional ones now. And then, uh, for example, I saw someone tweeting the other day about the Dirty Harry books, which I I guess I vaguely sort of remember, but apparently there was a, a series of Dirty Harry uh, novelizations that came out after they stopped making the movies in the mid-'80s. And, and there was a Columbo series that I remember that I've never been able to uh, purchase because those are all kind of expensive. For some reason, whoever decided to do the Columbo novelizations took an interesting take with them, the publisher who directed those novelizations, whatever. They're all con like sort of conspiracy-based. They're about Columbo solves the JFK murder, Columbo, Columbo solves the Jimmy Hoffa mystery, those kind of things, ripped from the headlines kind of things about these long-standing sort of uh, real crimes instead of the type of uh, crimes that Columbo solved in, in the 
in the actual uh, Columbo television films. How did I get off on this? Okay, we can look back at this question again. What would I call it? I would call it something... What would I call my bookstore? I would call it something peculiar. And I don't even know how to describe what I would call it. But it would have some sort of obscure reference that only uh, book nerds would, would recognize and that they would love it. But I would have to really brainstorm what that would be. And uh, sell new or secondhand books. I would sell new books. But I would also, of course, have to sell secondhand books because, as Gavin said, those are... Those are the best books. I really miss small paperbacks, small pocket-sized paper books, paperbacks. Those are the uh, greatest ones, and I would love to have a bunch of those for sale. Uh, would I sell anything else? I'm I'm into like blank notebooks and things like that, and uh, I would sell some cool ones of those, not like super super overpriced one, but I would look for the companies that are doing the best kind of moleskin type books, moleskin type books or field notes, those kind of companies and or um, small creators of those, Etsy type creators and stuff who are doing like reasonably priced ones. I love those kind of things and I'd have all kinds of interesting ones that I thought were cool. Be a good excuse to play around with them and look at them and, and buy more than I would ever need for my own use. Um, so those are some of the features and some of the other things I would sell. Okay, so that's oh, we're moving right through these. Okay, number four, one person, not a booktube creator, creator, with whom you can have a good conversation about books. If you don't know a person like this, who do you know that you wish would become a reader, so you could talk books about books with them? I don't want to call out specific friends or anything. My favorite kind of person to discuss books with is when I meet a person that I'm, for whatever reason, I have to talk to, like, you know, on a plane or in some sort of, uh, some dinner party that neither of us wants to go to or something, where you find a person who uh, you can talk about books with, just a random person, you find out that they're really into books too, which is exciting because that's not most people. Most people that are in, say that they like to read or you know, uh, five book a year people or two book a year people. I just mean when you when you come across a person who just for no reason you have nothing in common, other than the fact that they read a lot of books and that they enjoy books. That's a real uh, wonderful connection to have with anyone. So I enjoy that, and I think um, I'm not going to give you much much push pushback on that from anyone on this channel. I'm sure we all enjoy that. Okay, <clears throat> number five. If you want a million dollars or pounds or yen or euros etc. I'll definitely take the million pounds. Uh, that's the highest of all these listed here, the highest uh, buying power. Um, and you could only spend it on books or book-related items. What would you spend it on? Well, like I said before, I'd love to have all my old books back. I would, I would uh, purchase them back again. I would like to have, I think Gavin yeah, mentioned the kind of publishing he would like to do. I would like to, this would take more than a million pounds, but I would like to take a lot of these books that are being, and I'm happy they're being reissued on on ebooks. For example, you know, so many writers like Stanley Ellen and John D. MacDonald and a lot of ones that are, are being published by these sort of aggre aggregator like Open Road publisher and that kind of thing but they're a lot of them are in kind of um, I don't want to say ugly but kind of not era appropriate uh, editions and make a, a line of uh, pocket-sized paperbacks of great books, but make them look like the eras that they came from. Not necessarily just a facsimile of the original Gold Key editions. I mean, uh, yeah, Gold Key or... Is it Gold Key? Or am I thinking of the comic book company? Uh, you know, just, just books that came out, like the Executioner books... Uh, that era, there was there was a lot of series of, of different imitators of the Executioner. They had a specific look about them, very seventies look, 
And, you know, hard case crime does this, but they do trade paperbacks. And hard case crime is like one of the great publishers out there. But the books are beautifully done in acknowledging the era that that these books, these type books, uh, these type paperback originals were created in, even though they do um, big trade paperbacks and hardbacks. So I'd like to do just super cheap five dollar, six dollar reissues of the kind of paperbacks I loved growing up, crime and science fiction paperbacks and make them really accessible and cheap and easy to access. So maybe I would add, like I'd do a small press and sell those in my bookstore. I think I'd run out of money pretty quickly though. But I wouldn't be doing it for the money. It would just be to, since someone gave me a million pounds, I might as well use that. So those are the kind of things that I would spend it on. Now tag some others. Okay, I'm, I've gotten kind of gun shy on tagging. Did I mention the, this tag was created by Heather Reeds? I think I did. Um, I had to pause and get my list of people to tag. I don't want to tag people that I've that I've done. I've gotten kind of sloppy on searching these things when I end up tagging people that have already been tagged. I don't like doing that. And I'm also. I uh, don't want to tag anybody who never uh, responds to the tags because I, I can only assume they, they don't want to do it, so why bother them with them? Um, and I don't want to keep tagging the same people over and over, but I will tag. Scally Dangling about the book. Um, I don't think she's done it yet. She's a pretty popular booktuber. I, I apologize if you've already done this one but i don't see you on there i'll tag i'm not sure how to say it mave ever books which is a person i just started uh following faceless book reviews i'll tag again let me know if you want me to stop there faceless because i've tagged you on a bunch of these i try not to tag the same people every time um there's somebody else I wanted to tag here. Uh, the Buff Bookworm. I like her channel too. She's another channel I just discovered this week. I'm going to tag. Um, I think that's uh, that's enough for now. There's a few other people that I've tagged recently, I believe. I don't want to pester the same people over and over again. Um, if you don't, if you haven't done it yet, anyone do it, uh, consider yourself tagged as well.